matter, all the nervous system being connected. So that was achieved by jnana and karma. Jnana means knowledge, karma means action. If you have the marriage of knowledge and action, then anything impossible can be achieved. So knowledge and action, having knowledge and then practicing it. Unless and until we practice knowledge, the knowledge will not benefit us. We may have a water bottle with us, but unless and until we drink it, we cannot quench our thirst. We have to drink it. We have to open the bottle, take the water and swallow the water, then only our thirst can, thirst can be quenched. So the Ganesha signifies that if you have the knowledge and you have the action, you have the jnana and you have the karma, that automatically with the marriage of jnana and karma, your obstacles will be resolved, your troubles will be over, you will find a way and where there is a will, there is a way. So many, many parables are there, many, many stories are there and they all tell us that you have to combine, you have to, what is happening in the world? We have the hydrogen atom, H2, we have the oxygen atom, oxygen is gas. Hydrogen is gas. But ultimately, when they combine with each other, when the hydrogen combines with oxygen, two atom of hydrogen, six atom of six uh, uh, electrons of uh, oxygen, when they come together, they form a molecule of water. So coming together, in the same way, we have to also combine with God. We also have to combine with spirituality. Then only something will manifest. Otherwise, it will only remain as a gas. So if you want to have a trinkle of water, water which gives life, we have to combine, we have to associate with us. And this combination is called yoga. Because in Sanskrit they say, Chitvirti Nurdascha Yoga. What is yoga? Yoga means union. Yoga comes from the yuj root meaning to unite. And we have to unite our mind with the spirit. Because we take breath, we are breathing and we breathe. That is why we live. If we stop breathing, we will cease to exist. And in this breath is the word of God because you know very well that Christ was fasting. And he was fasting and the devil came to him and he said, why don't you ask God to turn all the stones into bread for you so that you may eat and satisfy your hunger. And at that point, Christ said that man does not live on bread alone, but man lives on the word of God that God utters within him. Within us, within our breath, God is uttering a word which is called Elohim. And that word was with God and that word is God. That is why in the Gospel of St. John, it has been written, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God. In the beginning meaning before the creation, before the creation there was the word. Now what actually St. John is talking about is that before we have this concrete, before we have this liquid, before we have this gaseous creation, there was the primordial vibration. And that primordial vibration was in the beginning. The molecules started combining and the world came into existence. We take one hydrogen atom, we combine with one more and what comes out is two hydrogen atom combine, 
they give helium. With helium, there is one hydrogen atom, it becomes lithium. And you have the entire periodic chart, one after the other. You take one break, you keep the second break and the third break. And after all the breaks are together, you have a wall. In the same way, one after the other, the creation comes into existence. But in order for the creation to exist, you have to have the creator. This house, after seeing this house, definitely, I have to acknowledge that somebody made the house. When we see the creation, we have to acknowledge that there was a creator. There is a creator. There will be a creator. Otherwise, the world cannot sustain. The world cannot exist. So, what we are talking about is to unite our mind with the creator, to know the word of God, which God utters within us, within our breath. And this knowledge is given by the spiritual teacher. So, we have to look for ourselves within ourselves. We are just like a musk deer. The musk deer has the musk within him. The musk has a lot of fragments, beautiful fragments. And the fragments comes to him. His nostrils catch the fragments. And he thinks maybe this fragments is coming from some stone, maybe from some plant, maybe from some hill. And he starts wandering around. But the poor deer does not know that he himself is the source of the musk. So, Mriganabhi Kundal Vasen, Mriga Dhunde Barmaen, Aise Ghat Ghat Brahma Hai Duniya Janat Naen. So, what we have to do is to search ourselves. And I will give you a small story. Tell you a small story. It is about a philosopher. His name was Chen. So, he was very sad in the morning. His pupil came to him and said, Master, why are you sad? And he said that I am sad because I had a dream. And in my dream, I saw that I became a butterfly. Now the problem is, that's not my problem, that in my dream I became a butterfly. My problem starts now because a butterfly can also have a dream. And the butterfly can have a dream that the butterfly is Cheng. Now my problem is whether I am the butterfly or whether I am really Cheng. Now my problem has started. So the question is who we are. This is what Raja Janaka said. He was a great king. He had a dream. And in his dream, he became a pauper. Very, very poor man. He was asking for, he was begging, asking for arms. And finally, with great effort, he got some food. And as he was about to eat it, two bulls came and they mashed all the food into the ground. He was horrified and he's just, he was shaken up and he opens his eyes and he finds that he's in the palace. And a great question comes to him, what is truth? Is it that I was a beggar, is that truth? Or now I am living in this palace, is this truth? And finally he's searching and searching and he meets a master. The master was crippled completely. He could not walk straight. So the master came to him. Many, many intellectuals started laughing that how can this lame man who can't even walk, how can this lame man give knowledge? But that master said that the sugar cane is crooked. Sugar cane is not always straight, it's crooked. But the sweetness of the sugar cane is always the same. So my limbs can be crooked. I'm crippled, I can't even walk straight. But my knowledge will liberate this king. And so finally, the king came to him very humbly and asked him this question, what is truth? And he said that when you close your eyes, you see the dream. The dream appears to you 
very very you have a very concrete experience of the dream and when you wake up you know that that experience is all a false thing it was a dream when you close your eyes that this world also becomes you can't see this world and it also becomes a dream the reality is which makes you experience the dream the reality is the thing that makes you experience this world your consciousness we have four stages jagrat swapna shushupti and turiya we have four stages of consciousness the first stage is jagrat jagrat means like you are aware of me i am aware of you you are seeing me i am seeing you this is jagrat awake stage swapna swapna means the dream state when we close our eyes go into a dream we have a beautiful dream for example a nice experience or maybe a bad one that is a dream state after the dream state comes shushupti in shushupti it means to have a very very uh, like for example we are very tired and we go to sleep and we completely forget ourselves when we forget ourselves that is the shushupti you forget whether you are female you forget whether you are male you forget whether you are rich you forget whether you are poor you forget everything but forget every forgetting everything is not knowledge is nishans of knowledge is a vacuum and turiya is a state which is the state of knowledge where you forget the world but you know who you are you forget the world but you know your spirit you forget the world but you know that that vibration primordial vibration is you and this is the state of knowledge and this is called turiya a complete super conscious state so the spiritual master master's grace gives us that and uh, we are very very fortunate to be here and we are i am seeing so many old premies who have come and uh, they have come from far away but uh, it is very very nice to see them and uh, this is a very i think uh, a cosmically planned visit <laughs> because we were not coming here what happened was that uh, we were invited by the united nations organization and i have to speak there uh, at the united nation organization and uh, i am leading my indian delegation so so we came to new york and we also came to see you because this is also our united premi organization <laughs> so so i'll be speaking there about uh, disarmament and national security and uh, if we don't destroy these nuclear weapons the nuclear weapons will destroy us so much of nuclear pollution is happening and uh, now a new technology is coming which is the nanotechnology it takes sewage it takes dirty water turns dirty water into pure medical grade water and electricity and this is something which is going to help the world and we have this technology i am promoting this technology in india so that this poor country can come up and we can have lot of energy so this is something fantastic and also what we are doing is that uh, we have many tea gardens in india and uh, the people working in the tea gardens are very poor people and they work there they go out and what they find is a bar they drink liquor and they can't elevate their family so with knowledge once they receive knowledge once they come to satsang and come to hardwar and come to delhi and they see the huge amount of people and the inspiration then they leave drinking liquor and all the money they have is it goes into raising the children 
their whole life changes and they are liberated. So that work is being done, which is a very great work. And also, we are doing a lot of things. Uh, Amrita ji has uh, spent all her salary in improving the conditions of the poor people. Uh, she has given all the money to all the children, orphan, and they all think about her because she comes and gives them money. <laughs> and uh, all the orphans, you know, who have no parents, no father and mother. So she has been doing that and opening up schools for the children so that they can get education, free education. And also <laughs> hospitals, yes, a lot of hospitals, polytechnics. And uh, also we have a bill in the parliament, which is right to work. All the poor people in India have been given right to work. And that is like 120 rupees a day for 100 days. The money will be given by the government. And a uh, lot of things are happening. And we are also thinking of bringing yoga as a uh, yoga should be taught in all the schools so that we get benefit of yoga. It's a great science. Yes. in all the colleges and schools. I have brought a private member bill to bring that into effect. And a uh, lot of things are happening and happening towards betterment. And uh, we have to plan ourselves, you know, we have to help each other. All the countries must come together so that this economic crisis can be uh, finished. We overcome this and all nations rise and come together. So. We are very, very fortunate to be in this place because after darkness, there comes light. After going down, you know, just like a ball goes down and then the ball is rebounded and goes up. So spiritually, we have to go up and uh, we all hope that all the countries come forward, help the poor people, help the people who are having less. And spiritually, we must meditate and strengthen ourselves. Because that is our spiritual food. That is our main thing. And uh, God bless you. And thank you very much for celebrating my birthday. Because <laughs> in India, it's being done in a very big fashion. And uh, so many people got a lot of good things. Here, we'll also give you sweets, <laughs> laddus. You have the American laddu, which is rosher. And we'll give you the Indian laddu here. <laughs> so thank you very much. And God bless you.